bear with us for a minute while we get our recording started. We'll be back in a minute. Well, welcome everyone to the authority session, more money, more exposure, and more clients. I am your host, Gina Gaudio-Graves, the Dean and Founder of Directions University at DirectionsU.com. My co-host is the Directions U Associate Dean, Jack Humphrey. Jack, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Jack and I are really honored today to have as our guest Tana Toronto, the founder of OSBO, the organization supporting business owners, a trade association that Tana likes to call a business owners association. Welcome, Tana. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I'm very excited about today and a chance to share the information with all of you. Well, thank you so much. You know, Jack and I have only known you for a short time, but it feels like we have all been best friends for many, many years. <clears throat> and it really has been our privilege getting to know you and all that you do with Osbo. Before we get into talking about authority, why don't you tell them a little bit more about what Osbo is? Well, Osbo is a compilation of resources that business owners need to be successful in their business. And it was born out of the idea, of course, I was a, a small business owner myself, and, and then I worked with major corporations. But I saw that businesses often struggled because they didn't have the resources they needed or even access to resources they needed. So when a business joins Osbo, they get access to um, business discounts, training programs, marketing programs, and even health and wellness programs that they can then offer also to their employees because we didn't want it to be just for a one-person um, opportunity. When a company joins, then the membership extends to all their W-2 employees. So now all of a sudden a business has lots and lots of resources available to help with their building of their staff and help uh, provide resources for their staff. So we're excited to be able to I'm constantly out there negotiating new programs and opportunities for businesses that might not qualify on their own, but by being part of the association, they get access. And over the years of growing Oshbo, you have worked with, oh, so many types of businesses, both online and offline businesses, not just here in the States, but worldwide. And I imagine that one of the biggest issues for all of them is really getting more exposure, isn't it? Absolutely. That's something that's key. And it's been interesting to me, Gina, to find out that anywhere I travel in the world, I meet business owners, you know, from major corporations down to solopreneurs and nonprofits. Globally, that's what businesses need. They need a way to tell their story, to get more customers, to help educate their customers, and also to help develop strategic partnerships to expand their business. And many times they've been isolated to only a few miles from their physical location just because they can't travel or they don't have the opportunity to expand their business. So now by being part of a global association, but also because most of our resources are virtual, it opens up the doors for a lot of uh, new collaborations as well as a lot of great exposure for our members and our experts. Um, I have a couple of things. <laughs> okay. uh, one of the things that I, I was out there, I, I got a bunch of people to come into this today because I knew what we were talking about was something that lots and lots of people need to 
uh, are always focused on. They, there's a, a lot of people who have a little should do list, and they there are things that we'll talk about today that are on their list of should dos. It's on every potential thought leader, authority, um, expert out there list of things to do for getting exposure that they need. They might just not have done it yet. So I want I want my for my part of this I wanted to to make this a, a brain jogger for people. Um, in terms of the things that they could be out there doing to get authority. And I started off by, uh, in a couple of different places that you guys might have seen in, in Google Plus, certainly I said, uh, what's it like to be on the other side? I don't think a lot of people talk about that. We always talk about authority. We always talk about exposure and how, um, how we're always after that thing. But what does it mean? What's a day in the life of that kind of person look like? Somebody who is considered one of the thought leaders in an industry an expert, a go-to person, that everybody seems to say, oh, you need that? Well, you need to talk to Gina, or you need to talk to Tana. I mean, it's just on the tip of their tongue when people are out there helping, and, and um, traffic uh, comes to thought leaders and experts in a much easier way than it does for people who are not known yet. And those of you who are on here that want to have a bigger presence and be known, know this. You're not, at some point, you're not the only one driving all the traffic. You're not the one who's on the hook for driving all the social following and all of the uh, attendees to your webinars or all of the uh, sales to your product funnel. That's one of the perks that we thought leaders get really used to after a while and we start taking a little bit for granted, at least speaking for myself. I, I started thinking what it was like when I started out and what it's like now and a lot of the things that we teach people how to do I don't have to do anymore. I don't have to do some of those steps because after you hit a certain critical mass in your authority and in your thought leadership, you don't have to go and do some of the things that everybody thinks they have to do or they do have to do at the beginning when you're just starting your business up or you're in the early years and you're ready to make that jump to the next level. And some of those things are I get ranked in search by other people. Um, we, you know, when somebody talks about you on social, especially on Google Plus, and they get other people in, involved in that and engaged in that discussion, and then you come by and say, "Hey, thanks everybody for talking about me and all that," and you put your two cents in, and you help and you, you're of service in any way that you can be. If anybody's got questions or whatever, you can go it within two or three minutes and find that conversation in search now, and it and um, you know, and it's and it's. It kind of comes as second nature. It kind of gets to the point where it's not um, its not something you pay attention to all the time. So this has been a good exercise for me to go, well, what are some of the other things that I enjoy that Gina and Tana enjoy and other experts in their markets enjoy that, that people don't have? And I think it's a really instructive way to get people goosed a little bit so that they take the stuff off, I should do this list, and put it on there, I'm going to do this list. So what are some of the things that we've done and that we continue to do to maintain our authority in the market? One is um, do webinars, do free education, show people what you can do, show them what you're about, show them that you're very giving and that you like to give them things they can walk away with and they don't ever have to buy anything from you if they want to. Let them know. And, uh, and get interviewed, get on blog talk radio, get interviews, have people go, you need to interview this person or have their guests saying, why don't you have Gina on? She's really, really good. It's, I want to hear more from Tana or, or whatever. And then the person's like, oh, okay. They can't say no to their guests. That's what a, having authority is about. It's what it's like. And so those things come to you without you having to be on the hook that you may feel like right now, if your business is going to go anywhere, it's only to the degree that you're going to be pushing and sweating against all the things that you've got to do and get them done yourself. But with authority, that is not the case. There's still work to do. We still have problems. We're not, you know, we still have goals too that we want to work and get to and, and all of that. But life does get a lot easier. And it's easy to get distracted from getting to this point as fast as you can, getting to that thought leadership as fast as you can, and getting bigger and bigger mentions from bigger and bigger thought leaders in the market saying you're a great service provider, you've got great products, you're a great coach, a mentor, an author, your book is awesome. To get to that point as fast as possible is really the sole goal of everybody in business, right? But daily distractions seem to pull at us at all times. Oh, my website's broken, or I, you know, this design guy just is terrible, is not getting my logo back, or whatever. And all of a sudden, it's next week, and then all of a sudden, it's next month, 
and you're still not that thought leader, you're still not that authority you thought you'd be by this time where you're not doing all the work to bring in all the traffic, the search engine rankings, the sales, the, you know, the favorable mentions from really, really big people who have crowds of people following them, hanging on their every word saying, oh, we need to go over here and see Tana? Okay, let's do that. And then masses of people just on one mention in, in you know, Facebook or Google Plus or something or on an email list or a blog post, all these people are just flying over. And it's not that you didn't do work to get to that point to have those things happen, but once you get to that point, it's like what I call critical mass, and then, it, you know, and then you're, you're at a different level. A new normal for your business is having 400 visitors a day as opposed to 100. And that's your new normal. You'll never go below 400. And when you do, you're like, what's wrong? And go fix it real quick. You're just moving up and up and up. And every day is a new normal for your business. So that's what I wanted to I wanted to give people ideas of the types of things today through Tana and Gina and, and what, what, what they recommend. What are some of the other things that, that uh, you've done with your experts that you work with now, Tana, that help them really kind of jump up several rungs on the ladder without having to take every single step and sort of leverage what it is you do with people? Um, what kinds of if, things do you do, webinars and all that kind of stuff with people? Well, one of the key things, Jack, that we have done that has been really, really exceptional for our experts is a lot of times they don't know how to create strategic alliances. They don't know how to share opportunities. And uh, a lot of people have a mindset that, oh, these are my customers. You know, I'm not going to talk to anybody else because they might take my customers away. So we're able to get our experts together and say, okay, uh, you've got a really great mortgage reduction program, and then the bank is actually, you know, creating new mortgages, and then we've got somebody in the insurance industry. Well, all of you are experts for Osbo. Why not collaborate? Why not share and do a webinar together? Why not uh, share resources and referrals? And they've all learned to grow their business because now they become preferred service providers for each other. And I tell my members, think about it this way. If you were a major corporation, you have all the experts you need basically on retainer. And you have a staff that will pick up the phone and call and ask the questions when they need something. Well, all of a sudden, your Rolodex just got much, much larger when you become part of an association and you have all this affinity within the organization. And now you have all these experts that are at the fingertips. It's almost like having a huge staff on retainer. It's so exciting. You know, I can actually pick up the phone and, and reach Gina and Jack if I have a question, but I can also go onto their page on Osbo and, and listen to one of the webinars or go on to the training that uh, is archived on the site. And it's not that you have to take it all in in one dose. You wait till you have a question and then you go find the person with the answer. It's really awesome. You know, I'm getting a lot of hits right now on people looking about home office deductions because it, it's just in tax time. But they may not, you know, go to that so often. But we have a lot of our experts that have learned how to be collaborators and to uh, grow their business accordingly. So step one in not feeling alone in your business and that the whole weight of the success of that business is on your shoulders is to stop being alone. Like, that's not very hard. Get involved with a group. And isn't that really what's behind an association or a group like Osbo is that, these pooled resources, it's not just a bunch of people sitting around talking about business. It's everybody doing business and then using the leverage you get from a group of people. Just like if you went and joined a Facebook group or something like that in a, on, a, on a very basic level, you're working with other people, you're meeting other people, and you're using leverage in your business. Step one from, you know, going from feeling like you're doing this all alone and it's all up to you to getting some help and getting some help from people who will do it for free and do joint ventures and leverage and things. Like, uh, what, what are some of the things that have happened in your group, Tana, with, with people who never knew each other before? They both came into Osbo. There's a million things you can do in Osbo. We'll go over a lot of them today. But, but just as far as uh, joint ventures and things that have come out of it from two people that you know uh, just never knew each other before and came out with something that was really great for them and advanced both of their businesses. Well, we actually ended up with a um, member in Birmingham that was a printer. And they then expanded their business because of a request. They were doing self-publishing for a while. 
And then somebody needed banners, so they decided to do banners, and they, and they partnered with one of the Osbo companies that did banners. And then somebody decided, well, they also needed to be able to have video production, so they partnered with an Osbo member that did video. So now when a company comes to them, they have a full solution, and they can outsource some of these things. So they look like a full solution provider by partnering with other Osbo members. And then I went to an event in Atlanta, and one of the groups in Atlanta was having postcards printed, and they were uh, doing it online. And I said, well, you understand that you get a significant discount by being part of Osbo. So they connected with the company in Birmingham. The company in Birmingham did their graphic design and started printing their materials and ended up saving them a tremendous amount of money. So now that company in Atlanta does all their printing work with Birmingham with the Osbo member and has now also referred a lot of other new customers to the Birmingham company. Well, they never would have met that Atlanta-based business. And we have a member in Arizona that was going to do a trade show, and they ended up buying a trade show uh, information from somebody in Atlanta, getting some printing done from Birmingham. Uh, they were able to order some of their promotional materials. So it, it's really a great way that all of a sudden, as I said, your database is larger and it's a preferred service provider network and it's also organizations that now you're getting business credit built up because you're doing business with other Audubon members who may send credit to you. You're getting references, you're getting testimonials, and people have that level of confidence of doing business together because you have been referred personally and connected personally. And a lot of people, if they hear you on a webinar, you are the expert on that topic, so they have confidence to do business with you. Yeah, so step two, uh, step one was get in a group, get in around, among uh, other businesses, and don't think too narrowly about that. Think about, um, you know, all businesses have something that they could probably offer some business, and one sense they wouldn't think, I don't have any relationship to that, but then if you're in that group and you mix it up a little bit, you learn more about the people around you and the businesses that they have, you all of a sudden start seeing connections everywhere. So step one is get in that group, whatever that group might be, and step two, take action. Take action on the things you see around you. Look for leverage points and start seeing the connection between, wow, the more I do this, the less I have to do of that grunt work over there, like take this social media course and you know, and have to do all of my own social media stuff. What I prefer to do, and Gina and Tana prefer to do, is go find people who already have a huge, huge following in social and then have a public conversation with them so that all of their people see you and they're like, man, this Jack guy sounds neat. I'm going to go follow him. To tell you the truth, that's how I got my 16,000 followers in uh, Google+. Plus. <laughs> that's how I did it. I didn't go one by one out there. I didn't take a social media course and if you look at a lot of the successful people in the world in every industry any industry you want to look at the most successful ones come into their business and they look at it a lot different than the average people do they start looking mid-level or at the top and they start going there's somebody who's already gotten all the search engine rankings for all the terms that I could ever want why don't I just go and make friends and, uh, and in alliances with people all the way up to that person, if I can't get directly with that person right now, my goal is to do so, and I'm going to get mentioned by Tony Robbins. I'm going to get mentioned by Robert Scoble. I'm going to get mentioned by name your person, Richard Branson or anybody else. And on my way there, I'm going to make alliances and leverage and leverage and leverage. And these people start, at, if you picture a ladder, they don't start on the bottom rung like everybody else in business always is taught to do. You start on the bottom rung, you work really hard every day, and you only get what you, you, know, what you sweat out. You only get out of it what you put into it, and that's all fine and good, and there is some wisdom in that, but when people take it literally, their businesses never, ever get anywhere, and that's 100% of the time. Nobody can brute force do this until they realize, and every business does at some point or another, that leverage is actually the key to growing the, to, the, to the level that you set out to grow in your business. And so we always go after the people who've already got the search engine rankings, who's, who've already got the social following, and we do nice things for them. Uh, we talk them up. We interview them. We give them publicity. We do all kinds of really cool things until they feel like, hey, it's time to reciprocate. Jack's having a webinar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote his webinar on my uh, 450,000 people who are following me on Google+. 
yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And it's just as natural as anything. It, it doesn't, it might feel weird to some of you guys right now, picturing that happening for you. But believe me, the first time it happens, it's great. You have a party, you pop some champagne. The second time, and really, it's the second time it happens, you're already used to it. That's your new normal, and you have people with half a million people following them talking about you. Or if you're in a smaller industry or whatever, 50,000. That would be appealing, right, to everybody. Well, people like that are in groups, and they know to, it's like uh, being in the Serengeti. Everybody knows to go to the watering hole to get water. Well, what happens at the watering hole? Everybody gets together, everybody's there, and uh, the birds that clean off the little, you know, bugs and everything from all the ungulates are there. They, they know to go there to do their business. Everybody's there to do their business. And, of course, also the lions are there to do their business, uh, which is eat the little ungulates. But... Everybody's there. It's the watering hole. There are watering holes that really successful people know to gravitate toward on the web and offline, too. And they hang out. And we intrinsically know this, but we get so wrapped up in our website and, the, and the, our sales copy. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. We've got to work with our assistants, whatever it might be, that we often forget the most important thing we're supposed to be doing with our business is networking and using leverage and going to those watering holes that successful people always intrinsically know that's what I need to be doing right now. I need to go because i got to get this printing thing done. I need to find somebody who can do this. I have this kind of budget. I'm going to need to partner in this. I'm not going to need to pay retail for this. i got to go find somebody that I can help out, leverage that so I can get a better deal on this print run than i got to do for a postcard campaign I have to do. Or I just need more mentions, so I need to go make friends uh, with these businesses, see what I can do for them so that they would, with, with, with no hesitation whatsoever, turn around and do something for me, like mail their list, put me up on their website, um, include me in their thank you page every time somebody buys a product. All those kinds of things can only happen if we're out there mixing it up in the right way and that we reprioritize to make sure that that is the very top thing on our list of things to do every single day for our business. Everything else is just details, and most everything else that we do doesn't make our companies any, bit, any money. You know, the busy work that we do, working on our websites, working on copy, that stuff is all part of making money, but that's not actually going out and doing the business of making the money. That's just copy if nobody's coming, and that's just a product. It might be the best product in the world, but if nobody's buying it, it's not doing you any good, and you're not really in business. So I think the watering hole concept, step two, make sure you're there and taking action, looking around and seeing what kinds of connections you can you can make. And I'm not just talking about Osbo here. You guys can run off and take this and you know as a as a little booster shot for your business and use it today. Right now you could well don't go right now because we got a lot of other cool stuff to share with you too. But you know, right after this you can go and and and, uh, and start doing this with any group. Go to those watering holes. But we happen to have one favorite watering hole and that's Osbo. So what are some other things uh, let's do step three Tim. Well before We're you go there stuff. Jack <laughs> Before you go there, let me just add one thing. You know, <clears throat> sometimes you can get even more leverage by not having to be the one going to the watering hole yourself. Yep. So what if, same example, out on the Serengeti, you go, oh, man, I just don't want to go out there. It's going to be hot. It's going to be crowded. I know so-and-so really wants to go out to that watering hole, and he loves my stuff, maybe I can get him to talk me up to everybody else. Isn't that really what Tana does oh so well? No, yeah. Recently, Jack, Jack Tana and I were on a call, and we thought we were going to be there like a half hour or so, but Tana and I got talking about all of these alliances that we have, and how long were we there, Tana, like three hours? Yeah, before you know it, it was just like and one thought led to another, and then, oh, yeah, by the way, we, we need to connect with this person, and, oh, we've got this opportunity. And, yeah, it's exciting, too. And I will share with you, Gina, and I know a lot of people on the call will understand this. We get pulled in so many different directions, and we get so many demands on our time. And sometimes taking that one more phone call is like, oh, my gosh, I can't schedule that. And then we get a call like Gina and I had the other day, and rather than being tired and saying, oh, we were on the phone for three hours, it fills my tank. And I know that well, you get every, your energy. Person, yeah, every person on this call knows what I'm talking about. You get jazzed. You get excited. You remember your why. 
and you start realizing, oh yeah, here's something we could do, or here's somebody we could introduce, or here's a concept we could bring forward, and, and that's my why for doing it. I get excited when somebody comes to me and says, you don't remember me, but 10 years ago I heard you speak, and here's something you said, and I put it into action, and it made this impact in my business. That's exciting to me. And the that thing that I realized a long time ago is, you can be an absolute expert and the very best at what you do, but you're not an expert because you say you are. You're not an expert until somebody else says you are. And the minute somebody else says, oh my gosh, I've got to introduce you to Gina, she is absolutely fabulous. She can help take your business to the next level. Or, you know, oh, I know the person you need to call to make sure that you get that taken care of. Jack can take care of you, and I just think he's amazing they're much more likely to pick up the phone and call you guys first because somebody else has given them that endorsement. So that's really what it's about for me with our experts is that we find the best of the best in all these categories and then make their awesome information available to the masses and endorse them as experts. And now they go forth with all these endorsements and all these uh, resources that they can say, yes, I spoke here, I was interviewed here, I you know, provided blogs, and I provided articles, and I have provided webinars. And if you're a solopreneur, that can be so, so overwhelming. I have people now that would love to be able to do webinars, but they don't know step one. And they're overwhelmed by the technology. Or they're overwhelmed with the thought of putting together the PowerPoint. Or what do I say? Or what do I do? But if you say, hey, all you have to do is just show up, and we'll ask you questions and interview you. Oh, I can do that. So mm -hmm. it, we take some of that overwhelm out of having to be an expert in everything and allow you to be the expert in what you truly are the expert in and let you shine and partner with all the other people that are the best at what they do. Here's a, here's a little thing, and I know you, Tana and Gino, you, you'll get this right away, but, uh, and everybody else. Uh, raise your hand, and I won't be able to see it, so just be honest. But raise your hand if you saw, you read a story in a magazine about somebody who, was, who got really successful. It seemed like it happened overnight, and they, um, they're being interviewed, and they're being congratulated for all of their accomplishments and all that. might be a, an IPO, might be a great startup that they just did, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, they weren't on the scene. Now, they're on the scene. And how many of you keep your hand up if... <laughs> You, you assumed, in the back of your mind at least, if not right outright, well, that person probably just knew somebody. Or that can't be me because they just knew somebody. And when I hear somebody say that, I pause and I let them just let that soak in what they just said. And then I go, exactly. <laughs> they knew somebody. That's the whole point of this whole thing. You have to get to know somebody. You have, that's how it actually happens. It's not something to resent. And most of us will catch ourselves doing that and go, that's not the way I should be thinking. And this, but, it, but we always, at some point or another, will catch ourselves, well, they probably had a leg up somehow. And I'm like, yes, they gave themselves that leg up, though. They didn't just get lucky. They didn't get born. Most people who have really successful businesses were not, in fact, born into it. They were not born into uh, a successful already running business. We're talking about startups, places that start really small, like most of the people that are on this call, you're small businesses, and it wasn't handed to you by somebody else. You're starting this thing from scratch. And the thing is, those people who, who are getting interviewed all the time in your industry, and you're like, man, what the heck is it? Well, deep down, don't you really know what the heck it is? And also, when you arrive at that point, which is absolutely true in every single case, that they know somebody, that somebody helped them out to get that notoriety, that they needed to get that foothold in that new reality for their business, you also know that they gave themselves that opportunity. It wasn't handed to them. And so that's what we're talking about here. And that's a little bit of a pattern interruption that I hope everybody kind of mulls over for the rest of the day, at least. When have I done that? And why, can't, why do I see myself, if I do, as separate from that person I just read in an article is you know, really killing it in this industry? And, and you might even think, man, my stuff is way better than theirs. I can do a better job than that. Or... You also should be thinking, maybe I need to go reach out to that person. Because a lot of times we think our competition is really our competition. We're not allowed to talk to them or anything. First of all, they're probably not as much competition as you think. And second of all, people who work in competitive areas are 
always working together. That's the other secret behind all of this stuff. Is that me and Gina are were in dead head-to-head -head competition when we partnered up, and then we realized, holy crap, that we're going after the same eyeballs, and we're both doing the same amount of work. We're both going after the same search results. We're both doing all this independent work. What the heck could we accomplish if we work together? Instead of we're, both of us going after the same, duplicating the work that needs to be done, and fighting each other for positions, jockeying for position in the market, and then we realized it smacked us on the head. We need to be working together. We were in direct competition. We had the exact same market we were going after, and then we went, decided to go after it together. So yes, everybody's got a leg up. Everybody has a special advantage. After they have gotten their magazine interview and they've been, they're getting congratulated for their successes, you can be very safe in assuming that they had a special leg up. They gave themselves that leg up. It's called leverage and it's called networking. And it starts working at the middle of the ladder to success and not at the bottom. You start working your way up from the middle up and you get to the top a lot faster and those are the only people that have magazine articles written about the success of their business 100 percent of the time am I close Tana or not absolutely and you reminded me Jack that early on in my sales career you know I was one of those that um, you know I would always become the number one salesperson in a matter of you know a very short amount of time just because it it was something that I just I guess I had developed and learned at an early age. You know, I, I, I tease that when I was a kid, everybody else would have a lemonade stand, and I would say, okay, well, Jack, now you're going to sell lemonade, Gina. I want you to bring uh, donuts, and somebody else I would assign to the brownies, and then I would sell <laughs> the stands, and then I would sell tickets, and then we'd have a show. And so, uh, you know, that was always just me from a kid. But I remember going to a Tony Robbins seminar back in, gosh, the early 2000s, and one of the things that he said is, who do you look up to and who do you aspire to be? Who is the most successful person in your industry? And how did they get, what do they do? Because success leaves clues. So mm -hmm. if you realize that success leaves clues, learn, but the most important thing for you to learn is, now that they're successful, what do they continue to do? What is it they do day to day? Are they doing webinars? Are they doing teleseminars? Are they doing interviews? Are they blogging? Um, what is it that they're doing to grow their business? And you start doing the same things, guess what? You know, you're going to get the, the results because, again, you know, doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results, what do we say? You know, people are always upset because they're not going anywhere. You've got to pay attention and think about who do you admire, who do you want to be, and how did they get there. And I found that almost every business leader that I've talked to, every thought leader, that they are now growing their business by sharing. And it's right. about what you give back. And giving back is one of the best ways to grow your expertise. Because now you're sharing your knowledge, you're partnering with other people, you're willing to help people. That doesn't mean that you give out your home phone number and say, call me 24-7. It means I am sharing my expertise with you, and I'm going to record it, and you can listen to it 24-7. But we are giving away our knowledge, and then we're expanding on that by creating really great strategic alliances and relationships. Mm -hmm. And people want to be in your sphere because you make them feel good and you help them. It's not about what, what's in me. And the people that start out with the what's in it for me don't go as far in this whole scheme of things as the ones who are saying, what value can we bring? Yeah, so what if you were in a group of people that all felt the same way? What if you, what if you uh, find yourself with a whole bunch of people at the watering hole and we're all looking at each other and it's like, hey, we all have this mindset where the money follows the success that I'm able to give other people through my products, my services, or mm -hmm. the happiness if you're in the entertainment, is just toy, you sell toys, whatever it is that you do for a business, that that leads everything. And you'll find that in a lot of people's creation stories from Richard Branson everywhere, all those guys have a really deep-seated passion in something. And they were really, they had the same sort of mindset, I'm going to help this person over here do something 
and then I'm going to get all this attention or all this other stuff, and everything else will take care of itself. The money then follows it. It's not going after it first. It's the money following it, and that's a huge difference. If you find yourself in a group of just it's a greed-based lack mentality group of people who are just, I'm just going to make money, make money, and here's how I get my traffic, and here's how I get my search engine rankings, and all this is mine, 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 mine. If you get in, a, you find yourself in a group like that, you have a, a justifiable reason to have an allergic reaction to being in that group. If, if that sounds familiar for you, to you and you real, remember yourself leaving a group like that really, really quickly, about as quickly as you came in, that's why. It's there's a difference in, in, in the kinds of people that you want to hang out with. If everybody you're hanging out with wants to help you first, and it's not you, know, you having to go out there and beg everybody for all this stuff or you know, feel like you're asking for a handout from uh, somebody who's got more traffic than you to get them to mention you or something like that. If you were in a group of people who didn't think like that, who have that traffic, who have those search engine rankings, who have that printing business and all these other leverage points that you could use to further your business, then that would be a really good situation, I would imagine. What's the general attitude of people in Osbo, from your opinion, over all these years that you've been organizing this stuff for people? What What do you feel like is uh, what would some of them say if they were here today? If they would, could describe the experience of being in with a, a group of people like this? I think the biggest thing for me is that Osbo. The difference in Osbo and a lot of other organizations is it truly is for business owners. So it's a group of decision makers. But because of that, you've got a group of people that a lot of times feel like they're on their own. They're out there. They're trying to make everything happen on their own, by themselves. They're afraid to admit to the struggles they have because that's going to make them look like they're not a good business person or they're a failure or if they're not bringing in enough customers, they don't have enough money. But when you get a lot of people together, you basically got a virtual CEO roundtable where people can share information and opportunities and experiences. And maybe they don't want to air it in public, but they can get on a webinar like this and say, oh, wow, somebody else had that same challenge, and here's the solution they found. And I've had so many Osbo members tell me that when they joined, they were joining at, at the early stages because we did live networking events. And they were thinking that they just wanted to meet people. But then they started realizing the resources that, oh, they didn't even know they needed certain things. you know oh, I didn't even know that that was available. So the information and opportunity that they get to expand their resources, but also those connections they make. And um, the, the, the connections are not just over a luncheon or face-to-face. -face. It truly is through the collaboration and the opportunity. And a lot of them share with me, if they only use one thing in a year, it's worth their investment because they get that one thing that they needed. And everybody needs something different because they're in different cycles of business. And the people that are just starting need different things than the people in later stages of their business. But the one thing I would share on the call is that um, people are very fortunate because they've got three people here between me and Jack and Gina. Uh, this is what we do instinctively as connectors. We There's some people that are networkers and some people that are coaches and trainers, and some people are connectors. And you know the connectors in your sphere. And those are the people that can't help themselves. You know, They go to Publix, and they're shopping for groceries, and somebody says, do you know where to find this? And they're recommending this product and that product and taking them over and showing them where to find it and giving them recipes and telling them about another restaurant or connecting them with a manager or recommending a, a store or a person. That's what we do instinctively, is we share the best of the best with the people that need them. I've been in airports before and heard people having a conversation. And I say, I just overheard that you said this. Would you like to meet somebody? You need to call this person. Go to this website. So it's great to also be in a network with people who instinctively know how to connect you with the right people. Well, another thing, maybe we can get, redirect just a little bit here and talk about some specific things that give authority, that lend um, credibility and thought leadership and respect to a person or a business that that person represents or the business itself, the brand. Some of the things that we put out on social media leading up to this were um, things that you could do, like have a webinar that's well attended and recommended by other people, all that kind of stuff. 
And then you've got that thing in your pocket that you can carry around. Well, go check out my webinar. Gina does this all the time. I know you do, Tina, as well. Mm -hmm. I had a webinar on that. Go see it or go to my blog talk radio show. Uh, I'll get you the link. We just did that in the last hour uh, for somebody who had a really great need to hear one of her episodes with one of her guests that was most pertinent to that conversation. These connections, these things, you have to give other people in the world, in your world, in your industry, things that they can recommend. And the things that they like to recommend the most are books, webinars, really, really excellent blog posts that are like really detailed and answer someone's question. Because what's everybody want to do? What do I want to look like when I'm recommending Tana? I want to look like a rock star. I want to look like a super helpful person that people cannot do without. So my recommendations have to be spot on. So I've got to have good things to recommend and good people behind those things. So if Tana did a webinar that on some certain thing, I'm going to recommend that. If she didn't have a webinar in the can on that thing, I'd have to go find somebody else to recommend because somebody's counting on me. I have to find the answers for them. And uh, if we make ourselves more of that kind of a, uh, a broker of where to go, what to do in a certain industry, you start making connections like this all the time. Somebody's going to be very, very appreciative of you if you point them to the exact thing that solves their problem. And it's not necessarily your product all the time. You know, if you don't have a webinar, a book, a Google Hangout, uh, a low price membership site, let's read off the list here, offline stuff, uh, Kindle ebooks, radio interviews, if you don't have any of that stuff for people to say, for Tana to go, oh, you need to go see so-and-so over here, this, this is the link to that uh, show that they did on their, that they got interviewed by this really big person on Blog Talk Radio and they talked all about this issue, go check that out. You have to have, they're like handles for your business, you've got to put handles out there for people to grab onto. And a lot of us, when daily life happens, start putting these things off. You've got to, well, I don't know if I can do a webinar. I'm not big yet. Nobody's going to come to my webinar. I don't know if I'm going to do this blog post because I'm going to put a lot of work into it. Nobody reads my blog. Nobody's ever going to read my blog. And that's kind of a chicken and egg kind of thing, isn't it? I'm not going to send anybody to your blog until you have something really, really great on it. I'm not going to be able to send anybody to your webinar uh, as the expert giving a presentation, teaching people what you know until you actually have that webinar for me to send people to, right? So we all know that this stuff is on our list to do and it is the most important stuff we could ever possibly do for our business. Everybody has to agree with that because that's what, that's how people are out there finding out about us. It's not really today through search anymore as much as it used to be. The word of mouth stuff with social media and everything else now the reason everybody's grouping up and people in your industry, I know everybody here knows people in their industry that used to work separate are now working together. Everybody is joint venturing. Everybody's using leverage. And everybody pretty much lives more off of the word of mouth stuff, the social media stuff, than they do off search than ever before in history. Uh, search is just cold traffic. We know that. We know that relationships are everything now. In order to develop that and begin that conversation with your ideal market, and for, and for people in your group, your leverage group of people who know you and love what you do and want to recommend you, you've got to give them stuff to recommend. So one of the big things that Osmo does is, and I'll let Tana describe this, give you the opportunities to uh, get out there. And, and then not just, you know, you could go to Google Hangouts right now and record one and don't, you don't even have to have anybody there. You just do a presentation. But if nobody showed up because you don't have enough reach yet, then you got to figure out where do you get that, where do you start this? Where do you get a foothold, a toehold in this so that you can at least get some reach? And, and I'll let Tana describe it from there because we can help you with that today. Well, and that's one of the things that we started out with. I uh, get a lot of calls from organizations especially. I'm sure that a lot of you, because of uh, being experts in, in marketing, if you join an organization, you're going to be the one that they put in in charge of building membership or putting the programs together. And I get calls all the time from organizations saying, hey, we need a speaker you know, coming up for a, a luncheon. We need somebody that can do uh, an interview. We need somebody. So I get calls all the time. Who do you know that can speak with authority on this topic? And you know, it's, it's sometimes difficult if you don't know an expert that you've actually heard speak before. And so you see the same people at events all the time. So I'm excited because I get a chance now to share people that maybe haven't had that opportunity before or somebody that has some new information that these organizations are interested in or a new person that can be interviewed by the media. 
Uh, I used to do a segment on CBS and ABC, and when I would do the business event, I was actually talking about lots and lots of business resources and opportunities and programs and introducing things. I can't do that all the time anymore. And one of my experts in Atlanta said she would never not be one of my Osbo experts. And she doesn't. She very rarely even does a webinar. And I said, why? She said, because when you can't go to something, we get the opportunity. Or sometimes when I do go, I get invited to a celebrity event. Or I get invited to an event with the governor or the mayor or somebody, and I'll just call my experts that are in that region and say, would you like to go with me? Would you like a ticket? Or would you like to go in my place? And if I say, I can't be there, but I have someone else that will represent OSBO, and I ask my experts to represent me because they are the representative of OSBO. So many times my experts have been able to have a display at an event that they never would have even been able to be invited to, or wonderful events like a Joint Venture Summit or uh, events with Tony Robbins that they may feel they couldn't have gone to, but I might end up with tickets or an opportunity or uh, a discount offering or a way for them to get exposure or do a workshop. So it just becomes a, a good collaborative effort. And once I've heard somebody do a webinar and I know the quality of the content they can provide, then I'm able to share that with somebody else. And so can all the other people that attend that webinar. So it gets that added exposure that people are looking for. And we do have media partners who look to us to recommend speakers. I've done that this week. I've recommended at least 10 experts for um, a show, and I've been recommended some people for, uh, for Gina and some other people, and I say, hey, this is somebody that would be awesome for you to interview on this topic. It's funny how they, uh, you, you watch media, you listen to media, you, whatever it is that you're, uh, whatever medium you're, you're, you're listening to or interacting with, and you think, man, these guys, I could never get on CNN or I could never get on uh, this radio station or anything like that. It's I'm you. You always put yourself in the spectators' uh, situation. But the thing is, behind the scenes, if you guys don't know this, behind the scenes, it's all pure chaos all the time. There's producers and there's assistants and there's people going freaking out because somebody's limo or cab or something didn't get to the thing and and or, or the, their their flight got canceled. They were coming in from Australia. We got to get another guest. We got to book another guest. Tana is the person that people go to in those situations. So if she knows about you and other people in the Osbo group also know about you and they hear about these things, when you find a lightning rod person like Tana then and, and you're known to her and you'd be perfect in a spot, she's going to come right to you. Because why? Not just because she would do that anyway. But it's also good for her because then she that makes it good for her and all her other experts because that producer of that show now knows she can produce experts at the drop of a hat sometimes when they have an emergency. Tana bailed me out. She's going to be the first person I call the next time. And the next time I'm going to need an expert in this industry. Well, if you're that expert in that industry, you'd better darn well be in Tana's you know, purview <laughs> so she can go, hey, yes, I do have somebody there. And then she gets to to be the reliable person for the media in that instance, and she gets to help all of her experts uh, be in the right place at the right time, make it look all like luck. And then once the show goes off, everybody in the spectators' world just think, well, man, that Charlie Rose just always gets people, and he never has any trouble, and I'd never show up on that show, or I'd never show up on this one. It's always utter chaos behind the scenes, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, I've got interviews online right now and on Google that I did eight, nine years ago. Um, I, I get calls from the newspapers wanting me to comment on things. And it was interesting to me that, you know, that just was sort of second nature to me. But when I would mention it to some of my experts, it's like, well, I've never done anything like that before. And I said, it's okay. If somebody wants to interview you, they ask you questions and you answer it. And, you know, you're the expert on that particular topic. But one thing that people, uh, if they have ever been paid to speak before or been on a stage before, you know that that's uh, not as easy as it used to be and that a lot of organizations that used to hire people to come in and do keynotes or hire people to come in for their annual conventions because of budget constraints, those things don't happen as much anymore. So the other thing that happens is a lot of times 
you'll hear about somebody's annual convention, and they want to know who is it that's in that local market that could maybe do something for them. And a lot of them are going to breakout sessions and, and workshops now rather than just keynotes. And I am really blessed that a lot of my experts, that's really where they shine, is being able to do a workshop or something interactive and um, sessions like that rather than stand up and give a 10, 20 minute speech. So it's great when you have people that are uh, experts that are really more in a consulting role where they're able to uh, really dig deep and ask questions and, and get the answers through a group collaboration. Or I actually uh, look to my experts a lot of times to do the mastermind sessions. Everybody doesn't want to hear Tana all the time. It used to be that way. But now I can actually get on the webinar, introduce my people, and then I'm able to let the experts say, OK, we're going to do a mastermind session. Uh, two or three of the experts are going to share the, the opportunity you know, to be the host. And I think that's a much better solution than it only being me that people get to know. So I, I love sharing the platform, sharing the stage, and sharing the opportunity with people that um, give them the exposure as well. So we're you showing. Know, one of the things that surprised me the most in getting to know you is how international your reach is with regard to this topic. You have yeah. people not just here in the U.S. locally, but all over the world coming to you asking you for experts that can come in and speak in a moment's notice, sometimes virtual, sometimes in person, all over the world. And that just is, is very unusual. Well, we were very uh, excited last year. I did a conference, and um, some of our speakers came from Europe. And of course, we had we had speakers from the Pentagon. We had speakers. Uh, one of our speakers was from the European Commission in Brussels. We had someone from uh, Rome. And when they came, obviously, they got to know all my other speakers, and a lot of them are collaborating now. And they've done speaking engagements. One of our uh, guests that was actually at the conference got invited to an international conference in Dubai. And you know, so they're now all of a sudden they have those international collaborations, but. Yes, Gina, we have a couple of international organizations that are marketing partners with OSBO. And they're excited about being able to provide our webinars on entrepreneurship and training with their businesses in Europe because they uh, that's a, not a strength that they have. And also, they are not good at marketing and promoting themselves as businesses. So they're very excited about having that collaboration. And then we're going to get the uh, opportunity to have expertise from European companies who they, they have no problem with doing business uh, cross borders. I mean, they're used to that. Uh, you talk to somebody in Europe, and you know they're going to Switzerland on holiday, and they're going here, and they're going there. Sometimes we don't even think about leaving our own state. So they have a different mindset when it comes to doing international business. And so we're going to get the uh, advantage of having their expertise and being able to share our experts internationally. So it's a great way to expand your marketplace. So it seems like there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of information and tips and things on the web about how to do this stuff. Gina and I propagate tons of that kind of stuff. Free information. How do you do this? How do you do that? On getting, you know, a speaking engagement, getting a webinar together, making the right connections so that you can get into the right onto the right stage virtually or physically in front of the right people. But this is kind of what we're talking about here in the slides as they go by. It's very clear that you have a program for this. That this is, this is almost like jumping up to the middle of the ladder. And that what Gina and I tell people when we do blog posts and stuff, that's all great. But that's it's not necessarily bottom rung of the ladder. But there there is a little element of leverage here that's not present in what you'd find. And you know, hey, you should just go out and do this or go make a connection yourself if you could have somebody like you the lightning rod who knows all of these different locations that people could be both virtually and physically uh, to, to you know you you know where the audiences are and the people who are in need for somebody to be in front of that audience who is a verified expert in, in their field and then you've got these experts over here on the other hand just dying to get in front of those kinds of crowds is it also conceivable that your members can contact you and say, hey, I just opened up a new 
thing that I think would go really well, uh, I think would go over really well with this type of market or this type of geographic location. We just opened an office in Europe or anything like that. Can they come to you and just say, what could you, can you hook me up with anybody in, with this specific need that I have? Well, and I would say yes, and even if they can't reach me personally by phone, they can send the email, they can send the information, and uh, especially my experts. And I would say, you know, contact this person. So it may not be me personally. If I don't know, I know somebody that does know. So I will connect them with the right people. And we've got, we've got contacts on each continent that we have a, a specific person who we can say, can you help? Can you can you connect this person? Can you make that opportunity available? And I will tell you one thing that I, I have um, found when talking with these people from uh, around the world and even you know across the country that um, it's a it's a really small world. But also one of the fears that people have, and Jack and Gina know this too. We've built up our reputation over the years, and whenever you refer somebody, you're sharing your reputation. And so it's all about reputation marketing as well. And when people come to me, they know if I give them a referral that I'm saying, this is somebody that I know, like, trust, respect. I know their work. I know they're capable. I know they can do this. Where if they find somebody online or even they find somebody that's written a book, they invite them to speak, then they come to the event and they're not a good speaker. They're not a good presenter. Uh, they're not the type of business person that really fits with their group. So there's always that fear factor that just because you find somebody that has a big following or you find somebody that seems to be an expert, you don't know if it's really going to be a fit. So I think that's the other thing that we can offer through Osbo is that it really is a um, reputation and referral network where we are basically endorsing, not just putting people out there when we have somebody that's truly an expert in that field, we are endorsing their expertise so that people have a level of confidence and comfort in connecting with that person, that they know the quality of uh, person they're going to get if it's a referral from Osbo. That's really cool. So it's like, you know, we can go to the middle, mid-range ladder, you know, and then we could just, or we could just start a couple rungs up above that. <laughs> And, and start working with and seeking out. But that's the whole tactic here is seeking out people like you that, uh, that are these lightning rods of attention and respect in, in a lot of, from people in a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different industries, and even geographic location, just um, somebody who's known, who, whose business it is to get other people business. That's really cool. And the ability to do so, backed up by the ability to do so very, very well with, with authority. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm all about the integrity, and that's the thing. I want to surround myself with people of integrity. And when people come to me and say, well, how big is your staff? And I say, I have thousands of experts that are part of Osbo. And basically, that's who I outsource to. I outsource to my experts and to my members. And you know, that's who I want to do business with. And the people that are the best in their field, who do they want to do business with? They want to do business with the best. And so when you start connecting the best of the best and they all start collaborating, then it's exponential, the opportunity and the growth that they can experience um, because their, their networks overlap and they collaborate and they share. And I'm sure you guys are the same as me. You know, people look at your numbers and they look at your followers and they say, um, you know, I'd like for you to share your list. It's like, well, you know, I don't give you my list, but you get the opportunity to get exposure to my list because when I do something and I promote it, then they see you because you're part of what I'm promoting. When they come to my website, they see you. When they come to a webinar, they see you. When they go to our social media, they see you. And even if I'm not directly promoting you as an individual, I'm pro promoting our experts as part of my product. And then I'm promoting their product as part of the product when somebody joins as a member, then they can get, you know, books and tapes and downloads and free offerings from the experts as well as now having opportunities to buy their products and have Osbo member to member discounts or resources or masterminds. I mean, I'm open to offering a lot of great value and it's really up to the expert how involved they get 
and how much exposure they want, but also if they're doing their own event, we'll market that as well. So they're not only just getting the opportunity to market whatever they do for Osbo, but if they market their own events as well. So I'm it's sure everyone picked up on what Tana just mentioned because it, it, it wasn't a hundred percent obvious. <clears throat> One of the easiest ways of getting leverage and really building your authority is to do what Jack and I like to call integration marketing, where you take other people who have their own products, their own services, their own customers, and you allow them to include something of yours as a bonus when they sell their stuff. Well, what Tana just suggested is that Osbo can become your joint venture partner directly through integration marketing. What Tana really just said was that if you're an Osbo expert, you get to include something of value for every single Osbo member to receive. Imagine how many people that could add to your list your database to your funnel so that they then have the opportunity to get exposed to everything else you offer. Ken, I think that's one of the most brilliant things you've done with this expert program. You talked about a huge jump up the ladder. Man, that is huge, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. It's, it's what you would expect maybe after you've done a little bit more groundwork. Um, you didn't just show up for a webinar on a Wednesday afternoon. You did a little bit more groundwork than that uh, to set it up so that you could have that big kind of success. Maybe it would take you a month. Maybe it would take you two. And that's nothing, of course, to any of us to invest in our business, to set up a relationship that would provide something like that for our business. Any of us would do that at the drop of a hat. No, no problem. But well, I have a feeling that Tana's getting ready to tell us what, what she has to offer that would just jump you up there right now. And it's, well, it's really quite incredible. It's what we've been talking about this whole time, which is the um, Osbo expert. So maybe we, we should go there. Yes, and there's one other thing that we really haven't touched on that makes Osbo very unique. All of us have been part of organizations before, mm -hmm. networking groups and chambers of commerce and other affinity associations. And it's very powerful for your business. But most of the marketing is member-to-member -member marketing. The thing that's different about Osbo is my database is a lot of businesses and you know leaders around the world that aren't even part of Osbo. So our training seminars are open to the general public, not just to members. So you're not only marketing to Osbo members, you're marketing to everybody who comes and everybody's welcome. So all of a sudden your audience is much larger. It has nothing to do with how many members you get exposed to because a large number of the people that attend our programs are not Osbo members. Well, it would still be kind of good even if you weren't that. It's great that you're that. It's great that they're public and that you're actually working on a wider audience. But why don't you tell everybody how big your internal audience is because it's quite impressive. Well, internally, we've got well over 25 million, and we've got access to the 28 million business owners through the SBA and SCORE, and then our uh, international database is over a million. That's not too shabby. I mean, I could make a living off of uh, just that, <laughs> well, and and as many idea, people could. Yeah. And so when somebody becomes an Osbo expert, they're really just, when somebody's coming to look at the Osbo website or coming to an Osbo webinar, they may get the excellent information whether they ever join or not. They have the exposure to my experts as experts in their field. So they're never limited just to doing business with Osbo members. And that was always important to me to be inclusive rather than exclusive is that we make the information available to the masses. But we're very particular about the ex expert program and we want people that are really qualified and have the integrity and have great information to share and have the desire to share information and resources with the business owners. And then I give them the access to being able to be showcased as one of our experts and to make their materials available um, on a special level to the members. The members always get preferred pricing and preferred opportunities and preferred resources, obviously. What if somebody is... Well, let's just walk them through everything they get when they become an Osbo expert, starting with the webinar services. 
Yeah. Okay. The one thing that we do, very much like what we're doing a collaborative webinar today, is if you are an expert in your field but you don't currently do webinar marketing and maybe you don't have a need for your own webinar service at this time or you're not comfortable producing a webinar, if you're part of Osbo, we basically produce a webinar for you, uh, at least one webinar a year that you are the expert, you are the focus, and we will produce that for you, market promote it for you, and archive it, put it on the website and on our social media. And so you are getting that exposure and then always have, uh, we always do it as a recorded event with the replay so that the audience is ongoing and you might do the webinar today, but you know, six, eight months from now somebody may pick your webinar up and listen to it. Or we also put it on our YouTube channel and we also share that with some of our other marketing partners that put it on their YouTube channel and they make it available to their audiences. So uh, several of our marketing partners also have associations that they share our information with. So from the webinar point of view, there's that side and then we also allow our uh, experts to provide blog articles on the website as well as for our newsletter. We will allow them to um, provide content for magazines, not just ours, but other publications. We en encourage them to also do a blog talk interview that we will post on our blog talk channel as well as on our social media, and then we make them available to do blog talk interviews with other organizations as well. And then, of course, they can offer their products. Uh, we, we ask them to do some products that they can make available for download or for opportunities when people join Osbo, but also then we make their products available that they may have um, webinars, books, tapes, courses that they can make available through Osbo that we will promote. And if they happen to do their own webinar, uh, you know, if Jack and Gina are doing a webinar, I'm going to promote it, even if it's not an Osbo event. So that's one of the other major things you're getting. And I own a marketing and PR firm, and I can tell you my clients pay me more for, you know, a, a month's worth or even a week's worth of consulting than they do to become an Osbo expert and then get access to all my resources. And as an Osbo expert, you're also getting the entire Osbo membership as well. So let's talk about how Osbo can help you save money and some of the other benefits that are part of the Osbo membership. Okay, well the, the basic membership that can really benefit you is obviously we're giving you the things that will help you to be more of a business. And so you get all the discounts from Staples. Uh, you're getting the same pricing as NASA and Boeing and you're getting an account rep and online ordering and overnight shipping at uh, no cost, the shipping is no cost to you and 30 day billing so you're building your business credit. We have a great partnership with Regis which is a worldwide shared office environment and I'm sure a lot of you know about Regis. The gold card is $600 a year. All of our experts get that gold card as part of their expert membership and they will then be able to utilize those resource centers for meetings and um, discounts on rentals for the conference rooms and being able to use that in uh, international airports to go in and check your email and have internet access and free coffee and you know virtual offices. It's really a great opportunity for people especially that are in the capacity of being trainers and coaches. And then we also have um, discounts on you know your social media, discounts on training, all kinds of training programs including uh, DU and, and what we're offering through Jack and we've got companies that will help with website development and hosting and your newsletter development and IT consulting and uh, Avis and Hertz rental car discounts. And then we also have um, shipping discounts, health benefits programs, health discount programs, LifeLock programs which are amazing and uh, discount health benefits for as little as $29 a month per for a family and that incur, includes LifeLock for every family member, Teladoc where you just call online and make a doctor's appointment, you talk to a doctor online, there's no additional cost, they can prescribe for you. Uh, and that's great for anywhere in the world or if you happen to be out of town. Discounts on your prescriptions, on vision, on dental, on roadside assistance, legal services, and that's all included for that $29 a month plan that's part of Osbo. <coughs> so that's just a few 
uh, there's hundreds of opportunities. And the exciting part to me is I always encourage the members to do member-to-member -member discounts. So that becomes an additional part of Osbo membership is now you also get discounted products and services from all the different members. So every time we add a new company to Osbo, that's a new opportunity for the Osbo members. And as an Osbo expert, you also get access to Jack's company's Brick Road Media has a program called TAST, which stands for the Customer Attraction Systems Training Membership. You get that for a full year, as well as Direction Views, Motivation to Profits membership. Jack, why don't you talk a little bit about CAST and what it's all about, because they really get that as part of being an Osbo expert. OK, so what we do here is uh, we realize that a lot of small businesses, especially offline businesses, um, didn't really shudder at the idea anymore, like they have in years past, uh, of adopting the internet and, and seeing, you know, they run into people all the time in the community and other businesses saying, man, I just got a whole bunch of new uh, customers last week from the internet. And they're like, well, how'd you do that? And then they said a bunch of, well, you know, they hired somebody. This is the lucky people that hired somebody that actually did good work for them. It's not the majority of them. And everybody's been in kind of the attitude in our market of, oh, we'll just let somebody else do that. I know that doesn't you know, apply it to probably anybody here. You guys are all more than open to doing everything you can just by being on this webinar to harness everything that you can, learn everything you can about driving traffic and getting new customers with the web. But uh, so it's kind of a hybrid. We have a lot of you folks in there. We have a lot of people who are who have historically been um, people only go to them and sell them services. We'll take care of your social media. We'll take care of your search engine rankings. We'll do all that. And collectively, worldwide, small businesses have started to give up on the idea that they, they could just pay somebody to make their internet problem go away. That they're going to have to get involved, their staff's going to have to get educated on what they're supposed to be doing on Facebook and Google Plus and how to get local search accomplished, how to set their sites up so that local search actually works for them, and that they're driving customers from the web more proactively and much, much more cost effectively by learning what they should be doing and that only they can do themselves. Because the web has changed so much, Brick Road Media can no longer go out and run somebody's social media campaign. Not like we used to. We used to pretend like we were them and it worked okay. Uh, it was never the greatest situation. We even then encouraged owners and staff members to be a part of their own success because it would be more sincere. It would be more um, the, 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 the sites would get more would updated more and all of that kind of stuff and Google was recognizing even a year ago when there was a difference between somebody doing the service for a business and somebody in the business doing it and so we just show people how to do the things they should be doing even if you're an expert you need to remain the expert you need to be fulfilling your products you need to you know do the things that you need only you need to be doing but there are a couple of things in addition that are so incredibly valuable in terms of the raw number of new customers and the new business that you can generate um, that only you can do, you need to learn a little bit about that. And that's where CAST comes in. And whenever everybody's ready to, to learn more about that, we, do, we, we have full-blown courses on Google, the new Google, where I'm kind of a Google fanboy, so I'm one of the few people who actually knows what Google's doing right now today to rank websites as opposed to people who wrote courses three or four months ago, which are already out of date. Anything that was written three or four months ago has no relevance and no business in today's. It changes that fast. So we teach people all the things they can do, but nothing that you shouldn't be doing. We don't teach you how to code HTML. We don't teach you how to do graphics for your website or any of that stuff. That's, that's all still safe to you know, have somebody else do for you. But putting your voice out there is very crucial, especially with the things that we talked about today with Tana on the Osmo stuff. If you're going to be that expert, you have to touch certain things you know, to have that quality that only you can bring to your content and your expertise. So when you're updating social, it's a very, very different thing to have you doing that and really thinking about what is my voice out there on an ongoing daily basis? What's my voice? How are people receiving me that are following me already? And, and are they doing it in a way that, or am I doing it in a way that's getting more of them to share me with other people? We talk about that a lot. So the tie-in here is extraordinarily obvious, and uh, I'm more than happy, and my partner Jeremy is more than happy to be a part of this and, uh, and, and have you guys all come in as members. Um, 
you get a lot out of it. You will, if you apply it, I can tell you this because I did the whole, I done all the training, and we do the training every single month. Um, you will get more customers. Period. If you do what we're we're talking about in Cast, and it's not hard stuff. You're not learning technical stuff or things you shouldn't be doing as the thought leader in your business, as the authority, as the expert. You're only doing what you really everybody needs to be doing themselves. Uh, but you're doing it better than everybody else because we show you how to do it right. And Directions Use Motivation to Profits course is a course that we're in the middle of updating right now. And has about 25 to 30 lessons in it by the time we get done with the new inclusions in it. It really is a high-level overview of everything we teach in our very comprehensive one-year-long program. In addition to all of the lessons that are going to walk you through everything from mindset to figuring out your business model, where the money is going to come from, where you're going to get traffic and leads, where you're going to find JVs, all the stuff we talk about with leverage. In addition to all of that, one of my favorite components, and I think Jack's too, is a call that happens every week like clockwork on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. Every week, one person volunteers for what we like to call the hug seat. It's a more positive form of a hot seat. That person comes in, and we focus the entire 90 minutes to two hours on them and their business. And we start by looking at who they are as a person, where they're at in their business right now, and where they want to be in their life and business in the next one to three years. And that dictates what we do the rest of the call. Because what we're really doing together is building the strategic plan for how to go from where they're at to where they want to be. It is probably one of the most amazing calls Jack and I do ever. Every single one has someone in a different niche with a different kind of business with a different set of goals. But all of them apply the exact same five core systems that every business needs in a way that creates such an elegant, beautiful plan that will absolutely positively succeed on purpose instead of by accident. So that when you leave that call, if you were on the hug seat, you've got this roadmap. You just go and do it. If you weren't the person on the hug seat that day, you've gotten some great ideas for how someone else's business can be used and borrowed from to build your own. And every single week we do this. Everybody on the call has huge, huge takeaways. In fact, lately we've had people describe our calls as being orgasmic. I mean, they are really <laughs> incredible. Not <laughs> many people in the world get to have uh, that sort of feedback on their calls. Absolutely. Not many of the people in the world might necessarily want that kind of feedback on their calls. I don't know. They're pretty powerful, Jack. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amazing. There's always a breakthrough. There's always some special. Like there's a, there's a little trigger moment on those calls that happens with everybody, no matter what their background is, what they're talking about, what their business is, and it's designed into it. But it amazes me every time that it works. Every time, every single um, person that's ever come through that on any gold call I've ever been on has an aha moment. Doesn't necessarily end in the in the way that Gina described for everybody, but. Head slapping, aha, uh, face palm kinds of moments. Like I can't believe this. This is changing everything for me. So um, that's just really a thing to behold every week. And people come back to it just to watch that happen. Everybody knows in in our group what happens on a gold call, and they know that the only it's the person and the and the name that changes and the business. That's all that changes. But people keep coming back just to watch it like happen. It's, it's crazy. And all of, it, all of this actually leads to that everything that we're talking about here is like results-oriented stuff. There's a lot of people out there who will go and say, well, we'll teach you how to get joint ventures. That's fine. That's good. And we do that. We have courses that do that. But this, what we're talking about today, is more results-oriented, action-oriented stuff. This isn't teaching you how to do it. It's showing you where to go to get it done. Get it done. There are JVs out there waiting for you guys, joint ventures. There's leverage out there waiting for you guys to take advantage of right now in this particular pace called Osbo. And then you package and cast and, um, and motivation to profit, and you've got yourself 
in a situation that's entirely different than the one you're in right now, which uh, I can't speak for everybody on this. You know, different people are at different levels of success with their business, but nobody ever gets to a point where they couldn't use a little more leverage or a lot more leverage. Some of you could really use a ton. This is where you're going to break in with your business. And others of you are, are at a plateau and you just can't seem to get past it. This is how you get past it. And it's not anything to do with learning how to do it yourself. It's actually putting yourself in people that are already there waiting to help you now, waiting to be your joint venture partners, waiting to put you on a stage in front of the exact right crowd, and being appreciated for doing that, for being available to do that. You know, you get appreciated for doing something you need to do for your business anyway. You can't get a better win-win-win situation than that, in my opinion. And, you know, the, the best part about it is it's not something that's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars to be a part of. You would think that with everything it, that is included that it should cost you that much. But, Tana, why don't you tell them a little bit about the number of opportunities available and what this is, small investment really is. Well, and we are, uh, you know, doing a really special offer right now at 497 for at least the, the next 25, and I think that we've already filled some of those roles, haven't we, Gina? But it's really to we get have. the people involved. I have to limit the number of people that I can bring in, mainly because of the type of exposure and, and things that we do give them. But they are going to be immediately entered into the program to be able to provide training programs, workshops, blogs, articles, interviews, and the actual things that will showcase their expertise. And then they immediately get access to the entire OSBO benefits packages, too. So they can take care of uh, things they need for their business today, save money on the things that they're spending money on, save time by helping to outsource to the people they need to outsource to, but then also giving them the opportunity to really focus on what they need to focus on in growing their business. So tapping into that expert uh, level of resources that they need and the corporate level resources <coughs> they need so that they can then become part of our, um, our big PR machine that we're using to make sure that businesses are educated and informed on how to grow their business. And I think you're showing so you want to get it now. You want to go to www.askggg.com forward slash Osbo Expert. It's in the chat box for you. It's www.ask, then three G's, ggg.com forward slash Osbo, O S B O Expert, all one word, E X P E R T, O S B O E X P E R T. You want to scroll down to the bottom and click on the Add to Cart button. This is about 90% off of what this really should be. There are only 25 spots available at $497. When those are gone, they are gone. And the membership then goes up to $2,497, where there will be an additional 25 positions available. But in order to do all that's included in this package, Tana really has to limit it to not more than 50 people per year right now. She just can't do everything for everybody. If you want to be one of those 50 experts that Tana works with every single year, get in now before membership goes up. So $2,497. Now, Can the I tell way that this works, we use a system that's a little bit different than Tana's normal system. So what will happen is immediately after you sign up, you will get access to CAF and to the Motivation to Profits program. Tana will then be in touch with you via email in the next 48 to 72 hours. There is contact info on the thank you page so that you know how to reach her if you don't get her email in the next 48 to 72 hours. She's got to go set everything up for you manually. And once she does, she'll send you your logins and all of the instructions for what to do next. Go ahead, Jack. Well, I just want to, I'm always the one that wants to tell the punchline. So here's a little, 
the funny thing about this being 25, actually there's 20 packages left because I think we've done our, I've done, we, we have 40. done five. Yeah, Correct. five. The reason, it's a really hard, fast thing because if you, if you were paying attention during this, you realize that there's a lot of hands-on stuff that has to happen here. Plus, if she has more than 50 people to, and, and there's 52 weeks in the year, and you are supposed to get promoted, and you're supposed to have the space so that at some point, all that people are talking about is you and your new expert webinar that's coming up or something like that. That's got to be done, and there has to be space to do it. And so you need at least a week to do that for every single expert. That's a hard, fast thing. I hate it when people use these as gimmicks. This is for real. <laughs> there can only be so many. There, the other thing is that there's 25 of these packages at 497 only because me and Gina were like, wait a minute, because we kind of, Gina's the one who told Tana that this is really stupid at 497. This is just stupid, ridiculous, crazy. You shouldn't be selling this value for 497. You should be selling it for more like a $2,500 thing. Well, Tana agreed, and the price was getting ready to go up. And then we were like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's let us sell us to our friends. You know, at least 25 of these. Can we sell them? Because that's the thing. If if we believe, if we're being honest about what we said today, then being a lightning rod, being a connector, an authority, a thought leader, an expert, a respected person in the market. It's our job to go out and find things like this and bring them to our people so that we can show you that we care as much as we say we do. And this is the perfect example of that. We didn't go, all right, Tana, you because you know we kind of we're buddy consultants with Tana. You know, we're she's kind of like a client in some ways, and so we're like giving her advice on things that we would do in her situation. And we saw this very very underpriced thing that was way more valuable than what she was selling it for. And then we said, go for it, and you know, you should raise the price. And she totally agreed once we showed her a couple of other things. And then it was like, wait a minute, but before you do that, can we sell it at 497 Because we need to be able to do that for you guys so that you can see how much we care and how much we do for our people. That, that raises the bar, it should, in your estimation of what we're worth in your space, your very limited amount of attention that you have to give every day to things outside your immediate business. And so we're fighting for that attention just like anybody else, but we're doing it by giving you the most value that we possibly can and really laying it on the line and showing you how much we care. We saved you guys from buying this from $2,500 uh, as long as everybody who wants it today gets in because there's only literally, really, and honestly 20 left. Well, I'm going to share something that probably Jack and Gina don't realize. We have never marketed the expert level membership in this way because I am very particular and selective about who I will work with as an Osbo expert because it's a reflection of my brand and it's also a very strong part of our product. So the opportunity here is that I am getting people that are referred by Jack and Gina and requested by Jack and Gina and I trust them and I trust their level of integrity and who they're going to recommend because normally all Osbo experts come in as a referral and recommendation from someone else and then I personally interview them and go through the process to make sure that people are qualified, that they are doing a great job, that they're going to bring value because there's a lot of a lot of hard cost that goes into putting somebody in as an expert by the time you build a page and put their profiles and pictures and build the webinars and everything. So I invest in people that I feel are going to give back the value that I'm looking for. And because of my relationship with Jack and Gina, I'm willing to let them promote this in a, in a way to bring in the experts because we just don't, we don't go out and advertise experts that's because that's not what we do. So I think this is a great opportunity for some key individuals that may be able to come into the program through the referral from Jack and Gina. Can I can I rephrase oh, what you, you said so just a little Tana. bit? You promote sure, the heck out of experts. You promote the heck out of experts when they're the experts in the program. But the program itself is not something that's really been. That's right, what you it's meant, not right? been open. It's not been open to the community. I've right. got tons of experts that I promote their products and webinars. But I'm saying, as far as being the Osbo expert and having that title, that has been limited. Yeah, and hopefully everybody can see how much weight that actually does carry. 
with a good sizable chunk of, of the population of the world, really, uh, being an Oswell expert, that actually means something to a lot, a lot of people. And uh, so that's pretty you know, cool, too. It just, re just kind of dawned on me. I'm just looking at some of the names that are on this webinar right now. We've got some people with some amazing backgrounds here, Tana. We have one gentleman who's in the hazardous materials uh, area. His name is Ron. And with some of the other things that you're involved in, like the Disaster Recovery Hub and all of the other things that you do, an expert in that area would be really helpful, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And that's another thing, also, uh, not just the organization, but we are also partnered in many other uh, programs, in, for instance, the Climate Resilience Hub, Disaster Recovery Space, uh, those we actually do webinars and teleseminars in that space, and those are all global. And OSBO is a, a co-sponsor of those initiatives. So anything that OSBO not just is promoting ourselves, but anything that we co-sponsor, um, our experts and uh, also get the opportunity to participate in those. Yeah, and, and so many of the people on the call today are in areas that would be really, really helpful. <clears throat> that is exciting. I am looking forward to seeing the profiles of, of everybody and seeing some new experts come in and getting everybody set up to uh, start doing the program. And we're coming up on May being Small Business Month as well as the uh, OSBO anniversary, so we do a lot of publicity. We're rolling out a lot of really new programs in May, so the people that come in now are going to also get the added value of that additional publicity because the traffic that will go through our websites and uh, social media and the press, when, again, when they find me, they find you. So that's the exciting part that um, when we endorse someone and we put them in the newsletter and on the website, it immediately gets picked up and it gets a, a a lot of great exposure for people, and I try to make sure that I don't just lump everybody together, but that we give people a spotlight and give them a chance that we can showcase just them. I love that Gina's already matchmaking people already. I mean, just it's just so natural to her. <laughs> hey, there's this guy over here in hazardous, and that's it. but it's an example of what Tana does inside there too. I mean, um, well, you, we really hadn't talked. Yes, this is so much bigger than just reaching out to people, which is what Tana was trying to say earlier anyway. Ever the matchmaker. Um, <laughs> and our, our initiative for the nonprofit organizations, too, I'm looking for some really great experts in those fields of being able to support nonprofits. I know there's certain accountants and insurance companies that don't work with uh, the nonprofit organizations or city governments. I mean, I have churches, I have associations, I have city governments that, that are members of OSBO. And I would love to have a group of experts that are really keyed into those particular areas that are willing to offer their expertise in, you know, in grant writing or proposals or um, insurance issues for nonprofits, board development, board research, fundraising. Uh, those kind of things, and those that's a, a new area of expertise that we're looking for for OSBO this year. And if any of you are slapping your knee going, oh, man, where am I going to get $497? Shelby just reminded me she forgot to put this on the page last night, but I just had her add it. This, this is eligible for PayPal's Bill Me Later, and here's what that means. PayPal has a special program that's called Bill Me Later, that allows you to take care of the purchase over six months, six equal payments. So if we do $497 divided by six, that would mean $82.83 a month for the next six months. All you need to do is go down to the bottom of askgg.com forward slash Osbo expert, click on the Add to Cart package. On the next page, you'll log into your PayPal account. And on the right-hand side, where you go to tell it how you want to pay for it, select Bill Me Later, and everything is pretty straightforward from that point. So if you do need to take PayPal up on their six-month same as cash offer, that is definitely available at, when you're becoming an Osbo expert. 
with that in place, none of you should really be thinking about this. Every one of you should be coming in right now before we run out of the 25 available at 497 and the membership goes up to 2497. So Tana, thank you so much for all that you've done here today. I really appreciated it. I can't wait to introduce you to all of the new people that are becoming OSBO experts. It's going to be a lot of fun helping you really get them exposure and get them to really get their businesses to where they want it to be without nearly the amount of effort it would otherwise take. I'm going to text well, I'm you with Elton Eldridge's. Sorry, I'm going to text you with Elton Eldridge's contact info too. Elton's been on the call the entire time, and you and Elton, who is the author of the Obvious Expert, for any of you interested in becoming the Obvious Expert, go check out obviousexpert.com as well. Uh, you guys have to do something together, Tana. Well, I'm very excited about it, and I also hope that a lot of people are going to take advantage of this now because I would love to be able to include them in this publicity blitz in, in May of uh, all the additional opportunities and downloads and being part of the package for all the new members that we're going to be promoting to in May. So uh, I would love to make sure that they get that extra exposure. But uh, I'm looking forward to uh, yeah. meeting all the new people and getting them getting them set up as quickly as possible. and. We'll be working really closely with Jack and Gina, too, to help you get the maximum exposure for your opportunity. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of new uh, levels of expertise that we're going to be looking for. So I'm sure some of you will be able to refer some people to our program as well, especially with what we're doing with, uh, again, a lot of the, the nonprofit entities, the city governments. You know, we're just looking for a lot of different areas of expertise this year, in addition to all the wonderful business products and services. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And Jack and I look forward to getting to know all of you as well. All right, thank you. AskGGG.com forward slash Osbo Expert. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. See you in cast. <laughs>